All right, well, thank you. Um, Eric Cantor, co-owner of Benefit Solutions Northwest has been actively involved in ASA uh, of 14 years now. And he's going to bring us a message today that I think a lot of us are not super excited about, but want to get the information on. And we thank you, Eric, for being here. And we thank you for all your involvement in all the things you've been involved in over the 14 years and, and many shops that you've helped along the way. So thank you. You're welcome. Brenda, can I share my screen? Yes, you can. Yes, you can, Eric. Okay. Give me a second here. It's up right now, Eric. Yeah. Now I'm just trying to get my computer to work. Oh, never mind. Give me one second here. It's not cooperating. Okay, so speaking of Olympia, the governor and the legislature about a year ago, back in May of 2019. Let's see. Hold on, I'm also in a Zoom meeting here. Let's let's go ahead and mute myself. Okay. Anyway, the, the state legislature passed back in May of 2019 and was signed into law by the governor, a payroll tax of 0.58% in a state that doesn't have an income tax for the purpose of providing long-term care to citizens of the state. So what that means is if you make $100,000 a year, you'll pay $580 a year in this tax to be deducted from your paycheck. It is an all W-2 income. So if hey, a person- Eric, yeah. are, are you supposed to have, are you trying to have a uh, PowerPoint up? Yeah, do you not see it? Mm -mm. Oh. No, it's not up. Okay. Share your screen again. That's what I was going to do. But I. Hold on a second. Are you hitting the share screen button? You did yeah, have it. It was. Hold on a second. All right. There we go. You got it. Okay. Now I'm serious. Anyway, so what, what, the, what the government did was pass this tax that allows them to take your money to pay for long-term care. This, this program requires that you pay into it for a 10-year period. If you're work any less than 10 years, you'll get nothing out of the program. It pays out $3,000 a month for one year, and you have to live in the state of Washington. You cannot retire and move to Arizona or Idaho or anywhere, anywhere else and use this so-called benefit. They've also, what is wrong with this thing? Sorry about that, my, um, bring it They, they, they've established an opt-out period that meet, that says you have to have your um, policy enforced by November, November 1st of this year in order to be able to opt out of the tax. So you have to have a long-term care policy or a life insurance policy with a long-term care rider, and then you can get out of the tax. Just, as it stands right now, it is a one-time opt-out period. If you don't opt out, you'll pay this tax for forever unless they change the law. So you have people that are in high school and things right now who are not working 
that will um, never be able to opt out of paying this tax the way the law stands now. Since it is, and, and the differences here are, this is a tax and we all know taxes only go one way, they go up. They've already said that the tax is gonna to have to be increased because it's not enough money to support their program. So we expect that to happen within the year. Um, if you buy an insurance policy, you don't have to worry about it, about it going up because those premiums, at least in what we're using, are guaranteed, won't, won't, will never go up. So, the, and, and I'm kind of going through everything real quick here. So the, the only option you have really is, is to do something now to opt out. Most insurance companies, I'd say 90% of the companies that, are sell, that did sell long-term care in the state of Washington have left the state. Um, at least until this is all over. So they're not writing right now. There's only a couple of companies left writing. And the ones that are, um, are mostly single premium programs. We got to write very large checks where most people don't have $30,000, $40,000 to dump into something. So that's not an option for most people. What we've got is a guaranteed issue group life product with a long-term care rider and an opinion letter written by all states saying that they believe their policy will qualify for the opt-out. And the reason they say they believe is just like when the FLMA come, it came in, they passed the law without, without all the details of how it will work. So nobody knows exactly how this whole thing is behind the scenes gonna work. Um, the, the beauty of it, I, I shouldn't say the beauty of it, but you have people like Pamela that live in Idaho but draw their paycheck in the state of Washington, who will still get to pay this tax and never be able to collect because she doesn't live in the state. And there's lots of people like that. Now, the, 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 the quick thing about this is, and I, and I normally, those of you know, we never say you have to do this now, but in this case, I will say you have to do this now. The opt-out period opens November 1st to start um, opting out. The company we're using is not issuing policies after the 15th of October. So we are telling people, if you haven't talked to us in the next week and we can set up a time to do an enrollment, it's just not gonna happen. And I don't know how this law is staying in force because everybody I've talked to does not like it. I mean, every shop we've been into that's put a program in place, 95% of their employees have signed up so they don't have to pay the tax. Does anybody get any questions? I mean, that was kind of quick and brief, but it kind of covered it all. What, what are the what are the benefits of the private insurance? I mean, what what is, what do you get out of those? I get out of paying the tax. That's the biggest benefit people want. Um, I, I'll, I'll I'll be honest with you. The policy we're selling, if you're looking for something that's really gonna provide enough long-term care to go into a long-term care facility, this ain't it. Average long-term care facility is $7,000 a month for a good one. The policy we're selling is a, like I said, it's a group whole life policy guaranteed issue. So there's no health questions. It, it provides a, a death benefit of 40 or 50,000 and 4% of the face amount can be used for long-term care. So it, it, it'll, it'll give you life insurance. It'll give you some cash values if you keep it long enough and it'll get you out of the tax. But it, it, it's not going to give you enough to go into a long-term care facility by, by no stretch. But it's also not going to cost them $20,000 a year either. So Eric, I have a question. So what about, you know, it's like coach shops and trying to give them some financial uh, advice in that. What about the, the one-person shop? the self-employed, what, what, what does that mean for them? And I mean, there's nothing we can do for them. If you draw, if you draw a W-2, if even if, like, I, you know, I own my company, but I, I still give myself a W-2. I have to pay tax if I don't opt out on my W-2 income. So it's all based in W-2 only at this point. So if they're like a single member LLC, which is a pass-through, they don't really write a W-2. They just take, they do owner distributions and draws. And that, and is, is that something that automatically qualifies them to not have to pay the tax? It doesn't qualify them that I have to pay the tax, but if you're not getting a W-2, you're not going to pay the tax because okay. it's based on W-2 income. 
I don't have a lot of shops like that, but there's a couple of <clears throat> single, you know, they're just, it's just the owner, he's the tech and he does everything and, oh, and yeah. he, does, he doesn't want to grow and that, and, and there's nothing wrong with that based on his life and where he wants to go with that. But mm -hmm. I just want to keep him informed of what he might have to do. Thank right. you. You're welcome. And nobody, nobody is required to offer their employees an opt out. No employer is required to pay for it. Matter of fact, we don't have any employers paying for it. This is all employee paid, you know, payroll deduction, but it's all paid by the employee and they're, they're lining up to do it. So Eric, I got a question, Eric. Uh, is this a payroll it paid through the payroll or is it something the employee pays them directly? It has to be through payroll. It has to be a, a, a check from the employer. Okay. But, you know, payroll is not, not, not your money. So, Eric, what's the difference in, uh, like, an insurance premium versus the, the tax? Uh, what does it really save the, does it save them from that or... And, and does it give more than $3,000 a month coverage? No, it, 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 like, I, like I said, it gives 4% of the face amount for long-term care. So if they got a $40,000 policy, it's only going to give them $1,600. Um, whether it saves them money on a tax or not right now is going to depend on how much money they make and how old they are. But a lot of young people, they're breaking even doing it, but they're thinking of the future when they do make more money and the tax goes up. Because once they get this, it's you know if it's ten dollars or twenty dollars a payday for for somebody for a young guy, it's always going to be that. And it's Allstate, a company that's been around for you know a hundred years. And I tell you, there's you know we've been in quite a few shops already, and the response has been great. I mean, the tax, they want it. They don't want to pay the tax. It's a, it, it's, it's a bipartisan, I hate the tax. So if by chance, and you're already, they're already talking about rates going up because they don't have enough in the program to make it work. But if everybody's opting out, you know, what's your gut feeling on, is this a program that's going to stick and last or are they going to not be able to even fund themselves and then, you know, just collapse and go away? Well, I will say there's an initiative out there to repeal it. There, there's several legislatures I've legislators I've talked to at different meetings have said they're make, they're trying to make changes to it to make the opt out period you know permanent every year to have an opt out period, which they should do if they're going to keep it. I'd rather they they didn't keep it, but if they do keep it, they should you know have an annual opt out. Um, but there's a lot of unknown. I can tell you, nobody I've talked to, no matter who they voted for, um, is happy about this. Hmm. I mean, it's just another way to take your money. And you can, you know, I'm telling everybody, so, well, what if I cancel the policy? I'm, I'm telling them, keep it at least till the second year. So if they ask, because right now they're saying you opt out once. But that doesn't mean they're not going to come back later if too many people opt out and say, hey, we want, we want to see proof that you still have coverage. That could happen, too. There's, like I said, there's a lot of unknowns. Anybody have any other questions for Eric? I guess it sounds like we don't have any more questions for you, Eric. Okay. Um, I, I, did we cover cost? The cost. There's a question the, in the chat box. Yeah, the cost is going to be determined by the age of the person and whether they smoke or don't smoke. It's not one price fits for everybody. The taxes, what the tax is, is 0.58%. Uh, that's the state one, 0.58. Right, right. We don't, we don't. Like I said, the premium is different based on everybody's age. A twenty-year-old okay. is not going to pay what a sixty-year-old is going to pay. Um, but sure. I, but I, but I'll be honest. I've told a lot of people. I've talked to guys that are you know sixty-two, sixty-three years old, and I always ask them when do you plan on retiring and looking at how much money they're making. If they're only making 
you know, 50, 60,000 a year. I've told, you know, if you're retiring in three years, pay the tax. You're going to lose the money anyway, but unless you need the life insurance, pay the tax because the life insurance is going to cost you quite a bit at that age. Yeah. Okay. So this is a life policy with a long-term care addition. Absolutely. Okay. So Eric, a question that was asked uh, is uh, it a grouped opt out? Um, if we hire an employee in January, uh, can they uh, be part of the opt out program? Nope. Opt out ends November 1st. So even if you hire a new employee in January, they it's mandatory that they have to? Yeah, they have to, they'll have to pay the tax. Unless they've opted out on their own or through a previous employer, we got an opt out product. It's so bad. You can have a 17 year old in high school today that's never had a job. And when, when they go to work, they're going to, they can't opt out. They're stuck for life as it stands today. So if a shop hires, say, a, a tech that wants to move out of a different state and comes in, they don't have an option on their first um, move into the state to opt out. Nope. They're, wow. Nope, yeah. they're screwed. Wow. Yeah, so it's a terrible law. It's really bad. So I know this is being recorded, and like some of the other guys, I had to be in and out, and so I missed the beginning. How can we go back and watch this recording? Because I didn't get all the information. I don't want you to have to go over everything again. You could, you could go to our, our website, Jim, uh -huh. and uh, it's going to be recorded there, and it takes us about two hours uh, to get it up. Okay. um on the website so give us a couple hours to get that up there and then you can go in and watch it right so the consensus of what i've been told about this already is that or jim if you want you give me your phone number and i can call you when we get off and answer your questions too they, that would be that would be great um uh so yeah I, I can just text you that or something yeah well let me i'll give i tell you what i get i'll give everybody my phone number in case they don't have it it's two five three six eight six six one four zero okay and no matter where you happen to be in washington or idaho we've got somebody working for us in every in every part of the state now right so i was i mean i talked to another guy about this and he was talking to us about not doing the state but to do uh you know a long-term care policy with an insurance company and then he said they weren't doing that but then i just heard you say you know the life insurance with a long with a long-term care writer on it and yeah that's going to be the way to go because at least we have some life insurance and we're paying into it yeah absolutely mm -hmm. and the thing about it to a long-term care policy i know you know if you're a little bit older like me and you're not in the greatest health you're not going to get a long-term care policy anyway it's a 32 page application and they're very very hard underwriting on them so like somebody like jeff or me forget it right yeah well yes yeah. and if, if we're going to keep, and is this these uh, life insurance policies, are they uh, uh, term or are they? All life. Was it all they're, life? Okay. Yeah, and they're guaranteed issues. So if you got a guy who works for you that's had cancer last year or, you know, has a heart problem, he can still get it or she can still get it. All right. And what's the, uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be different for each person, right? But do you yeah. think these life insurance policies are going to be better than paying the state this lifetime tax thing? For most people. Because at least if we buy the insurance, the life insurance, we're getting something extra out of it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Wait, what's your phone number, Jim? 360-708-2298. As soon as I'm, we're done with this meeting, though, i got to let my guy go to lunch and then Probably an hour after the meeting is over, I can. Uh, I'm I'm free for the rest of the day. All right, I'll give you a call later today. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Did everybody, get uh, Eric's phone number. Uh, do we need to uh, pop that up on the screen there? Eric, why don't you give your phone number again? It's two five three six eight six six one four zero, and that's my cell. And in all, in all honesty, and I hate even saying this, but and, and people who know me, they'll tell you, I, I'm not, I'm not a pushy guy. Um, but if we don't have you set up by the end of next week and scheduled to enroll your your folks the following week, it ain't gonna happen. We we've got hard cutoffs from the companies, and and we've never been as busy as we are right now because of this. It's insane. 
but we want to make sure we take care of as many ASA members as, as possible. You know, if you want to see how easy it is to get done, I know Bruce doesn't mind me using his name. We've talked about this. If you know Bruce up at Plateau Diesel, you can give Bruce a call and he'll tell you we just did his guys and it was quick and painless. Great. Any other questions for Eric? No, just please, Eric, give me a call in about an hour from now and Absolutely. I can go over my employees and stuff with you. Okay, sounds good. Okay. All right. Well, thanks everyone for being on today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next Lunch and Learn, which is October 14th. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate the time. All right. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Have fun storming the castle. <laughs>